Special counsel Robert Mueller is demanding documents from the Trump Organization. This is the first known time he subpoenaed documents directly related to President Trump's business dealings. Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders was asked about these latest developments on Thursday. As we've maintained all along and as the president has said numerous times, uh, there was no collusion between the campaign and Russia uh, for specific questions regarding the Trump Organization. I would refer you to them. But is that statement the president made in that interview back in July still stand that it would be a red line for the special counsel to be investigating the Trump? We're going to continue to fully cooperate out of respect for the special counsel. We're not going to comment for any specific questions about the Trump Organization. I'd refer you there. Bloomberg's chief Washington correspondent, Kevin Cirilli, is in Washington and joins us now to talk about what we just heard. Kevin, Sarah Huckabee Sanders there repeating the White House line. There's been no collusion. They've been cooperating this entire time. But she stopped short of saying Mueller had crossed this infamous red line that President Trump really had, had laid out. What do you make of the response and its indication, uh, the subpoena, of where the investigation stands now? Well, two things. First and foremost, where the investigation is headed now has certainly moved beyond just the scope of collusion. Now, that has frustrated Republicans, but uh, some Republicans would agree with it. Look, the notion that the subpoenas are now being issued to the Trump Organization only adds that Bob Mueller's team is looking to uh, really uh, cover all their bases with regards to this. But on the flip side of that, the second point that I would make is that this is an administration today that issued sweeping sanctions against Russians, more than a dozen, dozen Russian individuals, for regarding meddling in the election, a cyber attack pertaining to the healthcare industry that left hospitals in, in the United States unable to back up with paper documents some of their health care records and also impacted, according to Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin, billions of dollars in global trade throughout the world, spanning three continents. So this is an administration that publicly President Trump has not been as aggressive in targeting with his rhetoric against the Russians. But today I spoke with several Democrats up on Capitol Hill who were quite praiseworthy of what the president had to do. In their opinion, better late than never. I guess, Kevin, but the, the key question remains, whenever the Trump administration drags its feet to do what Congress has already agreed to, to do what the intelligence agency uh, needs to be done, the question is, why does it take so long? So you have uh, the White House Thursday agreeing to impose these uh, sanctions on Russian hackers for the election interference. Why do you think that decision was made now after delaying it for so long? You know, I put that question to Senator Chris Coons uh, earlier today, a Democrat from Delaware, a member of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, and he's frustrated. And quite frankly, those types of questions are going to come up in the confirmation hearing for uh, CIA Director Mike Pompeo, who has been nominated by President Trump to replace Secretary of State Rex Tillerson. But the notion that this has taken so long is drawing criticism not just from Democrats, but also from people like Senator Lankford, a Republican from Oklahoma, who are urging this administration to get tough with Russia. I spoke with one source earlier today in the intelligence community who really said, look, this is a good first step with sanctions against Russia, but it doesn't go nearly as far as some had hoped. Uh, and, you know, I, it's so these criticisms are going to only continue uh, unless there is presented a clear strategy. And that was Senator Coons's point earlier to me. Unless there is a clear strategy for how this administration uh, is trying to better protect democratic institutions in terms of elections and private sector institutions in terms of now the healthcare industry as well as Silicon Valley. Now I want you and our viewers to listen to uh, President Trump addressing the poisoning of a former Russian spy in England because I think what he says is noteworthy. Let's listen. It certainly looks like the Russians were behind it. Uh, something that should never ever happen and we're taking it very seriously as I think are many others. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, it certainly looks like the Russians are behind it, is the most forceful language we've heard from President Trump against Russia on this point. Did, did that comment come as a surprise to you at all? Well, 
I, I think in the sense that this this incident was cited by the Treasury Department as well as President Trump today as part of their announcement of this latest round of sanctions. This has drawn swift condemnation, not only from Pre President Trump, but also around the world, including from uh, Theresa May over in the UK. Uh, this is a very serious notion that uh, the Russians would poison uh, a, 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 a diplomat to some extent uh, of another government. That, that is very unusual, number one, and very alarming. It has drawn condemnation across the political spectrum. And to your point, absolutely, yes, this is a really a staunch criticism that we've heard from President Trump. Uh, perhaps it's also the timetable of this is the shortest we've seen with him responding more quickly than we have in the past to other allegations against the Russians. Now, I want to get an economic question into you before our time runs out. First, what, do you, what kind of role do you think Larry uh, Kudlow will play as the president's new economic advisor? And what do you make of the Washington Post reports that Trump admitted to making up a claim to the Canadian uh, uh, prime minister about the, the trade deficit with, with that country? Well, Larry Kudlow uh, is cut from the same type of media cloth as uh, President Trump is. I think that this is someone who's going to be a salesman in chief in terms of carrying an economic message for the Trump administration, better so, candidly, than someone like Gary Cohn. On the flip side of that, from his policy, which, to be frank, matters more, he's more aligned with the likes of Peter Navarro's of the world than he would be with Gary Cohn's. Peter Navarro, of course, being more of a protectionist than someone like Gary Cohn, who was more of someone who was a globalist. So that'll be interesting. There's now another voice, a resurgent voice, from the likes of folks who align themselves with an economic message put forth by the likes of Steve Bannon and Stephen Miller. On the flip side of that, your second question regarding NAFTA and the negotiations. NAFTA negotiations are nearing completion. Uh, uh, Prime Minister Trudeau uh, is someone who is really pressing this administration uh, for trying to get some type of better deal. But President Trump has maintained, similarly to he did as he did on the campaign trail, that he wants this negotiated better. He's running out the clock in the sense that he's trying to pressure not only Mexico, but also the Canadians to get some type of stronger bilateral deal. That's why you saw the tariff announcement last week in the aluminum uh, and steel industries. And it's why you're seeing him talk about and tweet about rather uh, the trade surplus or lack thereof uh, with Canada and Mexico. Never a slow day in Never Washington. Never a slow day, these but days. we live for this. <laughs> You're exactly right. <laughs> Kevin Sorelli with Bloomberg. Great to chat with you. Joining us. Thank in you. Appreciate it.